Hey guys, it's Jim. Hope you're doing well. Hello. I, uh, I have this photo here. It's an HDR that I made in Aurora, of course. Um, in fact, you can see the title is Grand Canyon Base HDR. So it's an HDR photo. It was three exposures. It was shot at F22 as sunset over the Grand Canyon. And I used F22 because I wanted to get this starburst effect when you have that really tight aperture, uh, especially with the, with the sun shining right at the camera. It does a great job of creating that sunburst or starburst effect, which I thought would look cool here, and I frankly like uh, how it comes out. Now you get some of these uh, these sort of, I don't know if you call them lens flares or specular highlights. I don't really know what the technical term is, but I kind of like them, actually. So um, I didn't even try to remove those. However, I did two things to this photo before I brought it into Luminar. The first one is I merged it to HDR in Aurora, and um, the only thing I did in Aurora was take the HDR look way to the left, uh, the base version, uh, you know, it comes in at zero, or maybe you don't know if you haven't used Aurora, but it comes in at zero, and you can move HDR look to the right to get more of that crunchy kind of, you know, over-the-top HDR, which I use at times, depending on the scene, but a scene like this, I wanted to go real sort of docile, very subtle with HDR, so I went all the way to the left, like negative 79, like really to the left. Um, and then uh, the only other thing I did is there were a couple of spots and I removed those. So I now have my base photo. And so I wanted to make um, a video about this because I did something different than I normally do. And that is I, I worked on it and then I literally saved it as a Luminar file and came back to it. So I was never really happy with it. So I have a bunch of different edits on like three different layers. Um, it's not that I don't ever use layers, but I, I usually sit down and edit a photo from start to finish and I'm done. Uh, but in, this wasn't the case in, in this uh, photo. So here we go. Let me show you what I did. Um, I started with, uh, let's see, what did I start with? Okay, I grabbed a number of filters. I got to look at my notes here. So I'll be looking here. I got clarity, I got tone, and I got split color warmth. That's a great filter. I love it. Saturation vibrance, golden hour. You can see that it was very golden. I have color temp. And then I have top and bottom lighting. So this was a situation where I just started adding filters to see what would work. And when I got to the end, I, I liked it, but I wasn't in love with it. And that's why I saved it and came back to it. So let me make the adjustments that I did here. Um, I added some clarity, but in this case, I, I filter masked it just into the bottom. So you just grab the brush and then you grab the filter, set your opacity and your size. I'm increasing it with the right bracket key. And then I can just paste this filter into the bottom of the photo. I don't really want to bring up the clarity in the sky. I like a soft sky, but I want a little bit more definition in this bottom half of the photo. So let me look here. Okay. There we go. Close enough, right? So there we go. So there's that. Uh, with tone, what did I do? I add a little contrast. I love tone, and I love smart tone in particular. So I'm going to go a little bit to the left with smart tone, something like that. Okay, split color warmth. It basically allows you to take the warm colors and make them warmer or cooler, and then the cool colors and do the same thing. So um, I actually warm up both of these. The warm colors are pretty warm already, so I'm going to do something like that. But the cool colors are pretty cool, so I want to go quite a bit warmer. So I'm going to go like 47-ish or whatever. So there's that. Saturation and vibrance. Let's see, I give that a little bump and, you know, something like that. Golden Hour, just a slight bump, really, just because I want to bring up some of those warm tones, but I don't want to overdo it. And then Color Temperature. Now, here I'm going to go counteract what I just did. I'm going to go a little bit left with a temp, because I also want to bring up some of the blues, maybe a little bit more, actually. Something like that. And then I'm going to go to the right with tint. And th that just gives a little bit more of that pink, kind of purple glow. And it really did have a bit of that, because it was sunset, and you had these wonderful clouds with all the color in it. I'm going to get back in hand mode to hide that upper menu. Um, and so I wanted to bring some of that back. And then top and bottom lighting, I basically just lifted the uh, shadows a little bit on the bottom. So there I was. I thought I was done with the photo, so I, but I wasn't 100%. So I set it aside, and then I came back to it, and I said, well, I'm just going to add a new layer. And I don't have to. I could just keep, keep stacking the filters that I'm going to use next on the same layer. But um, I wanted to keep what I'd already done sort of separate. And so adding a new layer is a good way to do that. So... Then I came back and I said, well, let me see what AI will do to this. So I put in a little AI. I put in a little hue and saturation and luminance. And then I did a little soft glow and a little soft focus. So let me get those guys. So AI, I went uh, about 27-ish. 
really brightens up the image quite a bit. Maybe a little too much, but let's leave it there for now. Uh, the reason I brought up HSL is because these highlights, uh, these flares coming off of the, uh, the light there, it's too green for me. So I want to take the saturation just to the green channel down. So I'm going to go real low, like negative 65. I don't want to erase it, so I'm not going to mess with that. I just want to reduce the intensity because, let me show you there, it's really green. To me, it's kind of distracting. And there, it just looks like a, you know, a highlight coming off of the, you know, because of the flare. So I think it looks kind of cool. And then I did something like, you know, 10 or 12 on soft glow and soft focus. So let me just do that real quick. Uh, something like that, maybe something like that. And then again, let me show you that layer. Let me show you the before and after. There's the before, there's the after. So once again, um, you know, I looked at it and I said, well, I'm going to save it. I don't know that I'm really done with this. Um, I like how it brightened up this, but it also looks kind of more HDR-ish than I want it to look. So um, i got to go to my next page of notes. When I came back, I opened the third and final, well, second layer, I guess, if you don't count the base, um, layer two. And this is where kind of the fun started is I got color balance, I got color contrast, um, and what else did I get? I got Orton. I love Orton. If you're not using it, I, I recommend checking it out. It's really fun. Then I got top and bottom lighting again. Then I got tone again. Then I got saturation and vibrance again. HSL again. Um, and then I got color temperature again. So, and that's the thing is you can use uh, the same filter multiple times in the same layer or diff different layers. It doesn't matter, but um, color balance. I have an entire video just about this filter. I love it. It's incredibly powerful. I use it on a lot of images, especially sunset and blue hour type images really gives you a lot of great options for enhancing the color, which I like to do. So I usually start in the mid-tones. There's, there's, you know, sort of by default, I think, a lot of mid-tones in an image. So it's a good way to see what impact that filter will have on the photo. So I, uh, let's see, I took this up because I want to bring up some of those kind of golden reddish tones. I took this a little bit to the left. I want to bring up a little of that magenta, not too much, something like that. And then I want to bring back a little bit of that blue. So let me show you there. There's the before, and there's the after. Big difference in the photo. Probably a little bit too purple, but I'm going to fix that in a moment. And some of that's because of the magenta here that I that I uh, slid the midtones towards. Uh, but that's okay. I'm going to take care of that in a moment. Um, color contrast. This is a really cool filter. Uh, you basically, um, you know, slide this. Uh, let's see. I went. I, I'm doing two things at one time. Let me slide that to there, and then I pick my intensity. My intensity is about 16 or so, something like that. Uh, the hue, basically, is you choose your color, and it follows sort of the, the color wheel. Um, you can see how this color changes. I ended up settling in around 207-ish. Oops, uh, right, right in there, something like that, and about 16. But let me show you the before and after. There's the before. There's the after. I think it makes a nice little pop on the colors, and that's why I used it here. Uh, Orton, I went about 5, just real subtle. Just add a little bit more shadow there, because in reality, it was in shadow, um, even though the sun's shining on it, it's still, it's got these deep, it's a Grand Canyon, right? So you have these deep, dark uh, crevices, and the light doesn't reach them all. So you get a lot of shadow, and a lot of that was lost. So I wanted to bring that back. Um, top and bottom lighting. Uh, this time, I actually took the bottom a little bit darker, because once again, I'm sort of recreating some of the shadow that was there. Um, I've lost it some in the processing. Uh, tone. This time, I'm adding, I came back around, add a little bit more contrast and uh, increase the smart tone a little bit. So again, these are just subtle, um, for lack of a better word, this last layer, uh, in addition to some color enhancement, it's also some refinement to what I'd done before. Um, even though I'd used some of these filters, many of these filters before, and coming back to them, I didn't like what had happened previously, so I was sort of just making uh, continual adjustments, right? Um, saturation, I actually bring that down a little bit. It's a little too intense there on the color. Maybe a little bit more in the vibrance, but I don't want to overdo it. Um, whoops, I got saturation vibrance twice, so I'm going to take that second one out. Uh, HSL. Now, this is where I looked and I said, all right, the blue is a little too much, so I'm going to go a little to the left. And the purple, as much as I like purple, it is one of my favorite colors, it's a little too much. So I'm going to go a little bit left here, something like that. That's more believable. That's actually more what it looked like. Um, and then color temp. I'm going to go just a little tiny bit warmer here, something like 7 maybe, maybe a tiny bit of that. 
No, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go a little bit to the left. There we go. And that's where I got to. So let me show you what this layer did. There's the before. You can see why I wasn't exactly satisfied with it. In fact, let's go back to the base photo, right? So base HDR, and then on that, on that layer, I made these enhancements, and you can see why I wasn't satisfied with it compared to the final. And then I went and added another layer, made more refinements, mostly shifting the light, it seems, there, just in looking at it. And then this last one, I really came back in with the colors. And now that I look at it, I might would even go a little bit less on the saturation. I don't want to overdo it, and I might even go a little bit less on the purple. Uh, but I like the look of the photo just to compare it to the before and after. Let me do that for you. You can see where we started. Base HDR, F22, three exposures. And by the way, uh, I'm shooting into the sun, so it's really bright. So the exposures, I started at negative four. A lot of people shoot three exposures or even five, but they always center it with zero being the center exposure. I only do that if it works for me, um, and it doesn't always work. This one I started with negative four as the first exposure. So my three exposures were negative four, negative two, and zero. So zero was my last exposure, which was the bright one. Um, so maybe that, maybe that helps you uh, when you're shooting HDR. It's something I've, I've done for years. Is I just don't center the exposures. It doesn't always make sense to, in my opinion, because a lot of time that, um, that plus, if you go, I, I shoot dark to light, so if you do negative two, zero, plus two, that plus two is just a blown out white mess. It doesn't do anything for you. Uh, so I don't even use them if, if I end up capturing them most of the time. So anyway, that's, uh, that's maybe off topic. But if you have questions about HDR, let me know, and I've got a lengthy tutorial on my website as well. That's about it for this video. Uh, one more time, before and after. And there we go, before and after. I think it came out really cool. I love the colors. It looked like that. There's definitely some purple um, and a lot of orange and some nice blue as well. It's a colorful scene. It was a beautiful sunset. I was really happy to shoot it. And that's how I edited it. So I hope, uh, hope that it helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Adios.